Yeah, people usually think I'm on the phone doing other things while we're in these live videos. But really, I'm just checking all the messages that are coming through on the Insta on Instagram, on the Instagram, <laughs> on the gram, <laughs> seeing what's coming through and trying to keep up to date with any questions that come by as we go live. Yeah. So we, uh, this was actually scheduled for Saturday. Both of us have crazy busy lives between... Chip, uh, Chip, what's up, Chip? between family and, and operating this, this business. So we push it off. And now here we are at six something on Wednesday or it's Thursday. It's Thursday all day. It's Thursday. So we got some questions. We're gonna dive right into those from uh, that people posted on our story over the weekend. And then if we have some time we'll get we'll get to uh, we'll get to some more questions. Probably gonna turn that down a little. Sure, that's bothering you. Um, so, you read them? You want me to no, read them? No, no, yeah, I can't, the, the light's in the way. Okay. Um, some of the questions that we got over the week were, question one, notice some Amazon sellers have thousands of positive feedbacks. How do they do it? And that is from Exclusive Products. Um, so, there's a lot of uh, feedback options feedback software that you can pay monthly for where when the customer purchases a product um, the, the software will actually send that customer a request for feedback and uh, that's something if you're not doing you should definitely jump on. There's also smaller scale too so listen I mean uh, things have changed on Amazon a lot but let me go back to there's also a smaller scale which is if you're new to Amazon and you're not ready to purchase software you could also go to Seller Central set up a template and you have a template requesting feedback there's so many things you could Google as far as you know what messages uh, customers are more likely to open you know because lots of sales tactics about opening emails so you kind of follow that same uh, that same template structure that they have for sales and you use that for feedback and you kind of bait the customer in to open the email because they got to open it if you want them to leave feedback and then once they open the email you know you have to have the right the right subject something that's short and right to the point and makes the customer want to leave you feedback and then like Eric said now if you're ready for the next scale and you got orders coming in and you don't have time to send every customer after they receive their order a request for feedback what you can do is there's plenty of different software companies out there that uh, can provide that for you um, but you know and, and with that being said there's also it also takes a lot of time mm -hmm. you know like one out of every maybe couple hundred are going to leave you a feedback one out, you know I, I forget what our percent is it, I think ours is like about 15% return uh, right now for orders to feedback something like that so not everyone's going to leave you feedback and in the past 18 months Amazon's made it more difficult because they've allowed customers to opt out of receiving messages uh, from sellers if it's not something that's you know an emergency. Um, so it's become more challenging but with that being said you know if you follow the steps that we're telling you to do now here it will become much better a percentage I have a larger percentage of uh, buyers replying and then you'll be growing your your company you'll look like a larger company and the more feedback you have it's one of the algorithms the analytics that the Amazon buy box algorithm looks mm -hmm. at so you want to have more buy box percentage you have to have larger feedback absolutely what's the next question next question question number two is from Robert Puel and he said all of my shipments have been going to one warehouse why is that happening that sounds like a good problem is that a problem or just I, a question? It's a uh, why is it happening? A Amazon, so Amazon has their own algorithm as, to far, as far as to where they send goods. I think that's a good issue to have because then you're not, you know, paying for, let's say on the East Coast, you're not paying to get one pallet over to Nevada, another pallet to California, another pallet to Chicago. You're kind of just all uh, sending it in volume to one location. So that's a, uh, that's a good problem to have. 
ways to kind of steer in that direction is if you have a lot of volume of just one product going out, they might send it to one place. Another way is if it's all oversized, they might send it to one place. Another way is if it's all hazmat, they might send it to one hazmat location. And another way is if it's all case packed, they might send it to one location. It's by chance. All of our products go to one location, but that's just because of volume, because yeah. we're sending full truckloads when we ship, so it's going to one location. Absolutely. Uh, so for Robert, uh, why is it going to one location? Uh, because you're a lucky bastard. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, Chansky, let's switch it up. Chansky on here says, how many active SKUs do we have? Um, Chungsi. I think it's close to 3,000 right now. About 3,000. Like, yeah, it's like 2,800. Okay. Uh, next question up on the TV screen. Uh, how can you avoid getting Amazon placement fees? Can you avoid them? Placement fees? Like, uh... Anyone out there know? Right, yeah, what, what, know. what does he mean by placement fees? Can anyone out there help us out? I don't know if Robert Puel's on here right now, but Robert, if you're on here, just elaborate. What exactly do you mean by placement fees? Help me out. Chansky says he has about 30. What does he mean by placement fees? Give us a better description of that, and we can give you a better answer. On to the next question, Mr. Kelly. What was the first product you sold, and why did you choose that product? We were just talking about this the other day, wasn't it? First uh, product I sold was Welch's Fruit Snacks. Uh, why did I choose that product? Because it was the first product that I touched when I decided to sell on Amazon. Uh, some people want to spend months, um, you know, researching, researching and, 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 and deciding how they're going to sell things. Me, I like to learn through experience, so. I said I knew if I was ever going to get started and, and change the direction of my life, I just needed to get started. So went and purchased some product, put them up there, sold it, was so happy and ecstatic. I think it was an or it was ten. Actually, I don't think I know it was ten that it was sold. It was FBM, and then I realized I was offering free shipping, which was great. And then I realized that it was being shipped to South Korea, which was <laughs> not so great because the shipping charges were ridiculous. Uh, and I quickly learned a lot from that experience and changed my shipping parameters and settings had to cancel that order uh, this is going back about seven years so you know thank goodness at that point Amazon wasn't suspending uh, sellers like they do now they're a little bit less strict um, but you know quick learning experience from that and it didn't happen again yeah and oh. then also what did you uh, we were looking at the other day was it the the uh, dog treats, Milo's. Or something? Oh, Milo's, Milo's. Yeah. If you look up Milo's chicken meatballs, yeah. Look up Milo's. They're chicken still meatballs. selling two hundred eighty-eight a month. <laughs> you'll see Milo's chicken meatballs. You'll see a horrible picture for that listing, which I'm sure plenty of sellers have tried to probably change, and then seller support gives them a generic response saying. Uh, you need manufacturer images or whatever, and there's probably no manufacturer image for it because it's a, a wholesale. It comes from a wholesale club from BJ's, mm. and you know it's one of those problems. I'm sure so many of you are familiar with out there, but it's a shit image. I put it up there when I was selling in the basement. You can look at uh, we posted that on Instagram of when I visited that basement. So it's an image from there, about six years old. That's one of our first products too. Milo's Kitchen Meatballs dog product uh, okay let's go back to someone says I think he has the setting going to a single warehouse if you do yeah if, if Robert Puel does have the setting going to a single yeah, warehouse you fees. definitely need to look at that and that is why you're getting placement fees yeah that could get rather so, expensive so Reg and Job thank you for that insight because that is true uh, if the setting if he did at some point state that he wanted to go into one location. He didn't read the fine print, which means uh, that if you do send it to one location, they will charge you a placement fee, and it's pretty expensive. So please, if you are uh, if you are sending to one location or it's going to one location, you're not sending huge quantities, meaning over five thousand, six thousand ASINs at a time. The most the reason for that is it's in your settings. So you're gonna to wanna to go to the top right of your Seller Central, click on settings, click on 
FBA, Amazon FBA, which will be at the bottom of the settings. And down there, you'll see all the information about commingled, about mm -hmm. label, prep service, and also somewhere in there you'll see about placement. Stream is back, yes, we're not gone yet. Uh, have you noticed a lot of Keepa charts don't show the rank even though you know the item sells? Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of common. It doesn't show the rank? It, it yeah. Does, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that you have a purchase version of Keepa. Uh, because if you don't, then you won't yeah, see any rank. rank. Yeah. So if you have the purchase version of Keepa, it might not show the rank. Yes, absolutely. Um, it also depends on how often somebody with Keepa is going on to a listing, and that's when Keepa pulls it. It kind of uses humans as a, a way to pull information. Otherwise, they'd be trying to pull from millions of Amazon listings all the time, which would become extensive. Do you lie when a manufacturer asks if you have a brick and mortar? Shadier than Slim Shady is asking if you lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know why your name's Shadier than Slim Shady. Uh, absolutely, we don't lie. Um, what's, it's not a great way to start a relationship with a lie. Uh, it's not a good way to harvest and, and, and grow a relationship with a lie. So we're honest from the rip and we tell them, listen, we're a large e-commerce distributor and uh, we want to sell your products. It's, it's difficult to start off with. So a lot of the consultations that we do with students, they, they ask me that question. And I tell them, start with smaller distributors in your general area. They'll be more willing to work with you. You know, it is a little bit easier for us because we've, we've grown. We can tell, you know, we're doing 150,000, 200,000 orders a month on all the platforms combined. And so they're more willing. I totally understand where you're coming from, but you have to look at it like, listen, if you want... If you want to purchase from this company a couple times and make a few dollars, go for it. Lie. See how far that takes you. But mm -hmm. at the end of the road, like if you want this to be a lasting income that keeps coming, like you don't want to start hiring people and you're growing this great relationship and then they find out you're selling on Amazon and you never told them and then they cut it from under you and your whole foundation is ripped from right Absolutely. under you and you're like, you know, paddling up Shit's Creek. So Absolutely. You know, it depends which way you want to go. Like what Eric said, I would not recommend it. It's the more difficult route, to, to be honest, you're going to get more rejections, but you're going to find long-lasting relationships. And that, that kind of leads into, uh, we are paused right now on Instagram. We're still live on YouTube. Um, so that leads into our next question. The next question is number six, which is, when getting into wholesale, should we focus on brand direct or distributors? When getting into wholesale, should we focus on brand direct or distributors? Next time, well, when getting into wholesale, should we focus on brand direct or distributors? I would say focus on wherever you can make connections. Um, the thing with going direct with brands is, it's, kind of, it's usually more expensive than going from a wholesaler or distributor because when you look at it as a volume, from the volume aspect, a wholesaler or distributor is probably buying a truckload of the inventory. You might be buying a pallet, a couple cases, maybe even five pallets, but the price difference is going to, usually we find products cheaper from wholesalers and distributors than we get direct from the brand. But not in all cases. There's a lot of companies we work with as well where the brand is actually uh, less expensive. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't eliminate any options. I would try them all. What would you do? Same, uh, same thing. And, and the reason that some of the, sometimes when we go direct with brands, it's, it's less expensive is because we had that honest open conversation. Yeah. They know we're selling online yeah. and they want us to grow their brand online. Yeah, so it's absolutely. not like, but otherwise they wouldn't give us that, you know, exclusive pricing or whatever you want to call it uh, but most of the time you know if you have a brand the brand isn't going to sell it less than a distributor and wholesaler is see I didn't know that early on I thought well if you go direct it's always going to be the cheapest but that's not the case because if a brand is selling to distributors uh, distributors aren't going to purchase the products if they know the brand sells it to regular mom and pops for cheaper because mm. the distributor will be like why am I distributing your product no one's going to buy from me I'll just get stuck with quantity so that's kind of that relationship that they have there. Uh, H. Daniel Glassglow says, 
on Instagram. What do you think of Amazon UK? Is it good to invest on it? Yeah, I don't see why not. You know, uh, get your hands in all the cookie jars. Uh, we're in the process of, of sending some products over there in the next month or so. And uh, listen, if there's an Amazon marketplace that you can tap into, I don't see why not. If you understand the current marketplace, it's it makes more sense to sell initially in the marketplace in the country that you live in because um, it's just easier logistically. But if you could branch out, I don't see why not. With 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 the changes that we made in the past year, the developers that we have in house, we're going to be in UK. Uh, we've already signed up recently for Australia, which is a new one. Middle East. Japan and then UK obviously involves Spain, Italy, France, you Germany. know, Deutschland, Germany. Um, why, why, yeah, jump on it. Okay, so is it is it profitable right now? Maybe, maybe not. Is it something that's a huge market compared to US? No, it's not as big. But what is the advantage that Amazon Lit has over so many other companies out there? Is that we've been around for a while. We kind of were there before everyone wanted to be on, on Amazon and selling on Amazon. And you should follow suit and do the same thing in those international markets that aren't so big yet, because mm. they That's will so be. Saturated, they yeah. will be, they will be, eventually they will. It might take five years, it might take 10 years, but they will be. They'll, they'll have that same uh, brick and mortar to internet sales ratio that the US has. It'll just take longer time. Uh, how to FBA ask what do you guys use to ship uh, FBM? Was that right? I, I just lost the question. Uh, let's see. What yeah, do you guys FBM. use to ship FBM? Uh, you couriers or like uh, how to FBA? Do you mean like what supplies do we use? What couriers do we use? Or or what um, software do we use? And while we wait for him to respond or her, let's. Uh, what's the next question on here? Is Bottom where, right. where is the best place to? Okay. Where is the best place? Oh yeah, you're right. To look for suppliers, online. Online trade shows. <laughs> trade shows. Trade shows. <laughs> online and trade shows. Yeah. We'll do some reverse engineering. Mm. Too. Go through some catalogs, find some brands, and then contact the brands and see where it takes you. Yeah. You know, uh, what's the best CRM software for Amazon Wholesale in the UK? Thanks. Um, for Amazon Wholesale in the UK, I mean, I think it'd be I think it'd be a mix, and it really depends on what you're trying to do. So, uh, you know, you want to have a, a you want to have the feedback. So it, it'd be the same thing as the US. You know, uh, you're going to want to have your feedback software, you're going to want to have something that's anal analytics like Keepa, uh, you're going to want to have your your inventory management system, which you have multi-channel, uh, you know, and it depends what level you're at. I mean, it might be even more beneficial for you to kind of do it manually right now than spending that type of money on all these different softwares. How to FBA said, what carriers do you use to ship FBM for products that are small? Uh, USPS. First class mail, if it's under yeah. a pound. Um, another another great one is USPS Cubascan, um, and also Amazon shipping. It, I, it's, it's a pilot program. Maybe some of you are a part of it already, but Amazon is also now competing with couriers and yeah. shipping their products to, to directly. You know, they come to our facility, they pick it up and deliver these FBM products, and their pricing is Ridiculous. hard to beat. It is. I mean, they're, makes sense. They're they're definitely losing money. Yeah. They're definitely losing money on it right now. But Amazon's Amazon. That's what they do. They they lose money on it. They take out the competition and, the and then they slowly market, raise yeah. the slowly raise the price once they have a stronghold on the market. 